This is a News Channel 8 special presentation. Journey of Hope, Fighting AIDS in South Africa. Hello and welcome to Journey of Hope, Fighting AIDS in South Africa. I'm Nicole Killian. And during this half hour, we'll take you from the nation's capital to a nation at the center of the AIDS epidemic, from South Africa's biggest cities to small rural townships and villages. We'll introduce you to people on the ground and from our area who are inspiring others with their determination to save lives. In fact, after years of controversy over its AIDS policy, the South African government has united with civil society to launch its most ambitious plan ever to get this health crisis under control. I wish I could not have a child. A child's wish echoed in a nation where 5.5 million people are living with HIV. It's the second largest population with the disease in the world. HIV and AIDS is a major challenge facing us. This spring, a call to action by South Africa's acting health minister and deputy president during a summit to discuss the country's HIV AIDS policy. This strategy must work. The strategy is a five-year national strategic plan. Its main targets, cutting the rate of new infections by 50 percent and expanding treatment to at least 80 percent of those living with HIV. Ambitious aims that have been a long time coming to AIDS activists like Mark Haywood. The official response to the epidemic in South Africa has been characterized by one form of denial or another. While we still had the apartheid government, that government wasn't particularly bothered about an epidemic that primarily affected black people. In the first years of our democracy, there was a traditional conservatism around sex. So then we had seven or eight years of a political denial by Thabo and Becky. He's referring to the South African president who once questioned whether HIV caused AIDS. Minister of Health Oh, South Africa. Then last year, the health minister sparked international outrage, nicknamed by critics as Dr. Beetroot for promoting a diet of vegetables instead of ARVs. I must eat beetroot and garlic. And it's not working. Yes, yeah, not working. I don't know why the, po the basis of criticism oh. is. Dr. Namonde Ngundu oversees South Africa's HIV AIDS policy, a policy she says is among the most comprehensive in the world. We want to build on the successes of the past years, but also we must learn from our failures. Now a spirit of reconciliation. I think we've reached now a stage that says we can work together. And celebration. <laughs> to heal old wounds for a new AIDS-free South Africa. It's been a long walk to freedom, I must say. Since that summit meeting, the HIV-AIDS National Strategic Plan has been adopted by the South African government. It was approved by cabinet members last month. Well, as our journey of hope continues in South Africa... Find out what it's like for those living with HIV and how one Northwest NGO is helping to provide support to thousands in need. Plus, this is us as women that we must learn to stand up for ourselves. Can a drug actually prevent women from getting HIV? A Silver Spring organization is at the forefront of the cutting edge research near Cape Town. But first, hear from a South African nurse committed to helping the sickest patients in her own words. I am Gloria Shabalala. I have been a nurse since 1956. Okoku has been our patient since 2005. But she has gradually uh, gone down. Most of the time she stays in bed. Part of it is that she hasn't assessed the ARVs because the, the, the waiting list is quite long. organization that's committed itself to helping Africa, hence its name, AfriCare. The Northwest D.C. nonprofit operates in more than 20 countries throughout the continent, including South Africa, where the fight against HIV and AIDS continues to be a top priority in one impoverished community. Strong voices from broken homes. 
Most of these children are considered vulnerable, abused, runaway, some orphaned by parents who have died of AIDS. Their lyrics on this day, a song of gratitude for an organization that wants to help. When you think about the issue of poverty in addition to HIV AIDS, you know, this was one of the provinces with the greatest need. More than a slogan, Thank you so much. no one understands the need better than Dr. Ketchy Anna. We, we just were giving more money by the U.S. government. Who spend several months away from Africa's Northwest headquarters to manage their HIV AIDS program in the heart of South Africa's rural countryside. The Eastern Cape is one of nine provinces here in South Africa. In fact, it's one of the country's poorest and most of the families at Africare serve here only makes about 400 rand a month. That's about 50 U.S. dollars. Take 43-year-old Stekium Keto, unemployed and living in this humble home with bare essentials, a bed and a Bible. A picture of former President Nelson Mandela also hangs on the wall. It's next to death certificates of family members like his wife, who passed away in 2000, presumably from AIDS. <laughs> the signs and symptoms of that of HIV positive. Mkedo is also HIV positive. That's his CD4 count, hovering just above a diagnosis of full-blown AIDS. Sometimes I feel weak and sometimes I feel good, he explains to Dr. Anna, accompanied by caregivers who visit regularly to give him antiretroviral drugs. But it takes more than medicine to stay well. Learning how to cultivate a proper diet with a garden of potatoes and other vegetables is part of Africare's nutrition project. This 58-year-old is already digging in, growing spinach in his own backyard. Energy he needs to fight off both HIV and tuberculosis that's caused him to drop to a mere 72 pounds. I don't think uh, I would have gained weight and I don't think I would have been physically fit the way I am. No. I'm healthy as a horse, I can say that. Oluwadini's smile is a sign she's feeling better. The new mother got involved in one of Africare's support groups for discussion and song allow her to embrace her HIV status. I feel like I could kill myself because it was stigmatized. But here in a support group, they educate me. Even though there's still stigma, we've seen a great change in, you know, people's behavior. Starting with the youth. Where Africa's peer workshops provide lessons about AIDS. How did you get HIV and AIDS? From the classroom. To the soccer field. And sometimes they use a more traditional approach. Training zangomas and this medicine or traditional healers we are supplied with condoms to use safer health practices. They did not know anything about health measures. They were just doing things, but now we are moving straight. Small changes making a big impact Bye. on people like Dr. Anna. Doing this kind of work. I can contribute my skills and my knowledge to actually cause a change in people's lives. And Africa is also getting more local help to carry out their work. They recently partnered with the University of Maryland. They'll assist with care at hospital and clinic facilities in the Eastern Cape.